call upon you today in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give him the praise today. Let's give him all that praise in our spirit today. We've waited on this day. We've gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from our hearts. Feeling every part of our praise. Your presence, your presence on this place. Your glory on our face, looking to the skies. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Feeling every part of our praise. Open up, open up the heavens. We want to see you. Lord. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Feeling every part of our praise. Show us, show us, show us your glory. Show. your glory, Lord. Show us, show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Come on, is that what you want today? Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power show us show us your glory Lord show us show us show us your glory show us show us your power show us show us your glory Lord open up the heavens we want to see Gates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, feeling every part of our praise. Open, open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, feeling every part of our him today come on Jesus we want to see it all today Lord we want to see you we want you to open up the floodgates the river God give us a deluge today God give us a downpour today mighty God we need you in this place hallelujah mighty God
there be glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory, honor, glory and honor to Him. Come on, let's see. Let there be glory.
today. Come on, let's just honor him with our hands, with our voices, with our surrender to his ways today. God, we honor you today. Lord, we bow down before you. We adore you, God. We love you, Jesus. We honor you as the most wonderful, the most awesome. Lord, we give you praise today. Hallelujah. Blessed be your great name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we know this great king will live forever. Come on, Scripture talks about finite kings and says, Oh, great king, live forever. But we know that we serve a king that will live forever. Amen. We, he will live forever. So it, it doesn't quite hold the same saying as when we say, Oh, king, live forever, because we already know that he will. And let me tell you something else. I want to live forever with him. I want to live forever with him. It is 100% true that we will forever live in a world without end on one side or another. And I present that sobering thought to you today that we can be cognizant of what we're doing in this life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Somebody turn to somebody else and say, I want to make it. I want to make it. Brother Caver, I want to make it. I want to make it. Amen. Come on, give him an elder, an, el an elbow touch and say, I want to make it. If you, if you do one elbow, you're just, you know, you're, you're greeting somebody. But if you do two elbows, you're just a chicken. You know, that's, that's, what, that's what I have heard, you know. That's what I heard. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated today. Amen. We're going to ask our pastor to come and lead us further. Amen. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to being where I'm at in the house of the Lord and looking forward to what's coming next. Amen. I'm on the edge of my proverbial seat today. Amen. Pastor. Everybody say, I'm on the edge. I'm on the edge. I like living on the edge. How about you, Brother Barry? Yes, amen. The edge of expectancy. Amen. I love living on the edge. I love being and remaining innocent in the Lord. I mean, I, I want the wow aspect in my life, Brother Joseph, every day. I want just heaven and earth and all in earth just wow me. I don't want to be calloused and bitter revenged and and have wounds that won't heal i want everything be under the blood and i want to wow in my life and i know it's not time to preach yet but i am so excited about what was introduced to my yard a few days ago surprise boy they smell good y'all i didn't even know they had a scent now i know another surprise Pardon me, pardon me for a second. Surprise lilies. Surprise lilies. I want God to surprise me every day. I'm surprised about the subject of the vessel this morning. I'm surprised of the fact that God allowed one mother carrying another child in a in a scooter, whatever you call them. Yeah. And had five or six kids around her coming to church Wednesday. That's surprise. Some of y'all are going to be surprised today because when I call your number, you're going to leave. Chris, is, he's hoping to get $1.5 million. Everybody say, wow. I want to. I want to keep my wow. I really do. I, I don't want to be so sedated with religion and boringness and uh, scared and being schizophrenia and locking my doors. Well, you better lock your doors, but you know what I mean. I want to have a wow while we're living this life. Praise the Lord. Don't forget this coming Tuesday, there's going to be 
for teenage girls only. Uh, I am reading July's calendar. I am so sorry. It's this Tuesday at night at 5 p.m. at Stony Creek. All of the teenage girls are going to have a lock-in at Stony Creek. There's going to be a lot of uh, swimming and, and games. My wife and Sister Marsha is going to be the chaperone. So if you want your girls to be involved, contact uh, Marsha and my wife. They've already made reservations, and I love Stony Creek. I love the fact that you can go swimming on the inside and end up on the outside. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, Let's continue to remember it's not in the calendar, but Thursday is our family night of prayer from 6 to 7 p.m. It wasn't in the August calendar, but those of you that are uh, taking notes, let's come together as a family of God and pray, 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 pray. I am so excited, Sister Marcia, about Veggie Tales uh, in the Sunday School Department and our teen uh, Wednesday Dynamic Church upstairs with my wife and a few others. We're so excited about Wednesday night. It's about that time of year that we're going to be doing our block parties, our parking lot picnics, and just doing it, doing it, doing it. Amen? Doing it, doing it. Now, how many's glad to be in the house of God? Well, we're going to have you to stand right now, and we're going to have the ushers to come and give you an opportunity to give unto the Lord. Uh, let's remember Sister Sims. Uh, Sister Sims had surgery on her foot yesterday, and they did remove a toe. But we pray that she will be able to uh, walk better. And also, let's continue to remember all of those that are sick that are not here today. Amen. Lord, bless this offering, God. Bless those that can give, those that are not able. Bless it all together. Heal those that are sick and outside of the ark of this service, Lord. Touch them. Let them feel your presence in their home right now. And everybody shout, he can do it. share with you what the music director just said to me and she said that you know when I'll fly away come on someday some glad morning I'm looking forward to flying away amen I'm looking forward to that amen she said when you talking about two wings and you like a chicken she just thought about I'll fly away you know <laughs> It's okay to have fun sometimes in church, amen? Amen. I'm looking forward to it for real, though. Are anybody else looking forward to that? Listen, if you're not, you're doing it wrong. If you're not looking forward to flying away from this earth, you're doing it wrong. You're missing something. If we don't have a hope, we are miserable. We are miserable. Come on, we got to be looking forward to that day, amen? And I... I know that it's only by the grace of God that we have the ability to have that hope. It's only by the grace of God that we are able to even think of this great thing that could happen if we live according to the Word of God. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day. And it's by His grace alone. Amen. And let's worship today. Hallelujah. the power 
of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you would lay down your Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. is the king who conquers the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain come on it's so worthy worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain yes he is worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy Slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. lift up our hands today. Jesus, we sing today, Lord God. Hallelujah for what you've done for us, mighty God, for everything that you've done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, can we close our eyes and raise our hands? That's it. Let's soak up his presence right now. Some of you need to soak it up right now. Some of you just need to soak up the Lord by the lifting of our hands by the lifting of our voices. Oh, you're the king of kings in our life, in our soul. You're the king of kings, Jesus. We worship you. We magnify you. The king. 
King of glory. Come in, the King of glory. Come in, the King of glory. Come in, the King of glory. And God bless you. Thank you, musicians. You can be seated. Again, I do want to welcome everyone to the house of the Lord on this wonderful, wonderful July, I mean August Sunday, uh, where God is still moving and God is still alive. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. And I want you to know today that the message that I'm going to be preaching to you both here and those of you that are listening on YouTube is a message that I feel that God has quickened my spirit uh, while this surprise lily uh, was promised to my yard two years ago. My neighbor was telling me, uh, don't mow over there, don't mow over there. We got lilies growing. I just mow around them. And in my yard, mow around them. And two years later, these little surprise lilies popped up a few days ago in my, in my uh, yard. And, and, and I'm simple-minded enough to be rejoicing over the fact that things appear out of nowhere. And they are beautiful. They smell good. Let's give these surprise lilies a hand clap. Amen? Yeah. Oh, did you see them that wave it back? Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 1. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Jesus said, consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these lilies. For the next few moments, I want to preach to all of us on a dynamic subject, an exciting subject, an enthusiastic subject, uh, just simply a subject entitled Surprise Lilies. Surprise Lilies. How many is under the sound of my voice? You really like surprises. Yeah? Do you really like surprises? I love surprises. I don't care if it's my birthday or if it's Brittany's birthday or if it's Sarah's birthday or Marsha's birthday. I love surprises. And if it's Brittany's birthday and not mine, I'm going to say, hurry up, Brittany. Open it up. What's the letter say? What you got in it? Come on, Sarah. Open that up. Marcia, well, is there anything in that card? Huh? Huh? <laughs> oh, wow. An Applebee $50. I get so excited and I, because I love surprises. Everybody can agree with me, huh? Yeah. Come on, somebody. I love surprises. So consider the lily here. Some call it surprise lily. Some call it magic lily. Some call it resurrection lily or whatever you call it. It is the lily that you see in the bloom of this time of the summer with all the stems and no foliage. And it just pops up and kisses the soul of men and women and boys and girls and God's creation just out of the just out of the clear blue your yard is decorated free of charge with the beauty of the Lord and I'm thought and I'm looked at that I went out on my deck and I'm thinking oh there it is that's what Miss Carolyn was talking about for two years. And, oh, it's, 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 it's coming. It's here. And I got in my car, and I went down, and I, I took a ride on Ashland. And all of a sudden, there was a house there that's been empty for a long time. There was a whole bunch of lilies there. And I went on down by Central High School, and there was a yard. Lilies! And I went down and uh, checked on some of my family on the south side. Guess what I saw down there? Lilies. And I got over there downtown area. And on the west side downtown, guess what? Lilies. What I'm trying to say is this. God is telling us uh, that there is a possibility that he is wanting to resurrect revival from the north to the south to the east to the west. And he uses things like consider the lilies. Well, I'm feeling what I'm preaching. Ushers, you be ready to take me out of here. Come on. 
Oh, oh, oh. 1 Samuel 3 and 11. The Lord said unto Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. Oh, you didn't hear that scripture. Those of you that are note takers, if you like surprises, jot down 1 Samuel 3.11. Then the Lord said unto Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears, whoa, of everyone who hears it will tingle. Oh, oh. Isaiah 43 and 19, Behold, I am doing a new, a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm going to be doing a new thing. Oh, I love surprises. I love the round the corner expectations. Uh, there's just something innocent enough in my life uh, that will receive. Receive. I want to be surprised. Every day that I live, I live for him. I want to be surprised. I want him to just roll my socks down. I want him to just flabbergast. Is that a good word? Flabbergast. I want him, and I'm going to live that way. Turn that corner. Oh, did I miss it? Oh, I'm waiting for that surprise. Wow. Oh, oh, every day, Monday, Tuesday, not just Wednesday, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not just Sunday, but back on Monday. Oh, come on, God, surprise me. Come on, come on, Jesus, surprise me. That's what I'm living for. The tiptoes, tiptoes of expectation. Oh, I'm living on the cutting edge of anticipating. I want God to surprise me with new things every day. Those of you that know their God, that know your God, shall do great exploits. Yes, I'm sorry, but I'm open for surprises. I am so open for God to wow me. Honey, I, I didn't know that was in the scripture. I would have stowed it before you stowed it. Where they, he, they said, don't be surprised when they were, that healing came. Don't be surprised as though. And that's what we need. Sister Angie, we need that. Don't be surprised that God saves a backslider. Don't be surprised that God heals a sickness. Don't be, be surprised that the Lord just opened up a door for three home Bible studies in your neighborhood. Expect. It. But I wish we could all just take our eyes and just put them up like that. I know it's physically impossible, but wow, I am just open. The Bible begins with a surprise. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 and 1. What a surprise. I've never read any other book with such a surprising beginning. What a dynamic introduction in the beginning God. What a profound opening. What a surprise effect. Here we are not beginning with the story of a best-selling fiction or a non-fiction book. We are not beginning with the top five best sellers at Barnes and Nobles, we are beginning with the very beginnings of beginnings. We are beginnings when within just a few words, we learn that God exists with just a few words that there was a beginning and that God was before the beginning. Here it says in three powerful words, you talking about a surprise. Three words that said, let there be. You're like on your tiptoes. Wow. The God of eternity just stepped out 
of nowhere and said, let there be. And there was. He created something out of nothing by simply saying, let there be. You may ask Brother Arbuckle who created God. And some of you young people may be asking, when was God born? And my answer to that question is God has always been and God will always be. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's eternity from ages to end. There is no limit that you can put on God. And I learned that God surprisingly decided to create the universe. God surprised us in what he does. God surprised uh, us. Just saying in the beginning. And I want to live on my tiptoes of anticipation. And I want God to surprise me. To start creating things out of nothing. Yes. Do not be weary in well doing. For in due season you shall reap. If you fail not. I want God to materialize some surprises. Of what we think are nothing. But I essentially He's going to create something out of it. Somebody's going to live for Jesus. Somebody's going to pick up their cross. Somebody's going to have a miracle of a godly desire to live for him. And I'm expecting God to say, let there be. And God's going to blow our mind. He's going to surprise you in the next few months because this epidemic, epi, epidemic, it seems like it's not going away a little fastly like it should be. And people are running out of answers. They're running out of hope. And you will, you will be surprised for the next few months who's going to be sitting next to you in your pew. We may have to break the law and say, hey, we're going to have to bring some uh, chairs a little closer. I don't know. But, hey, everybody say, I am going to be surprised of who's sitting next to me. Say that. Some of you under the sound of my voice might have not known this. My wife was surprised when I told her this, that God called Moses and Aaron and others up to Mount Sinai to sit down and eat with him before he uh, gave out the Ten Commandments. God calls Moses and Aaron and others up to Mount Sinai to sit down and to eat with him in Exodus 24. Wasn't it enough that God would guide his people out of Egypt? Wasn't it enough that he would give them his commandments and lead them to the promised land? God decided to invite the leaders of Israel for a dinner party. Read it for yourself, Exodus 24, 11. They beheld God and ate and drank with God before the Ten Commandments came. They somehow navigated themselves up the Mount Sinai and God had a table for them. And what I'm saying is that was a surprise. Some of you are still surprised. Some of you are really looking at your Bible right now. You're Googling this right now. It's in there, Exodus 24, 11. They beheld God and ate and drank. God surprises us by seeking fellowship with us. Let me tell you, let me tell you right now. God is following hard after us to fellowship us. And that's a good thing. Because when my mama fails and my daddy fails, my brother and sisters don't understand, and when other people and circumstances can't relate, here's God. I walk in the garden alone while the dew is in the roses. And it goes like he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Let's worship him, shall we? Thank you, God, for that fellowship. God, continue to surprise us every morning. Continue to surprise us every night. Continue to surprise us. You know... I, I don't know if I surprised Brother Chris or not, uh, but uh, the other day he was in the sanctuary cleaning and, and stuff. And uh, yes, yes, don't be surprised, y'all. Us men, 
We, we can clean, y'all. We can do the toilets, and we can rake the leaves, and we can pick up trash. All the men say, yeah. But me and Marshall, we was kind of on a roll. We were replenishing some of our kids' cups and, and, and strategizing a few other areas. And, and we just busted in to the sanctuary. And Chris was just, just walking, picking up stuff, and just looked up at us and went. And I'm thinking, he has no idea how hyper me and Marcia is right now. I mean, we were on a roll. But I feel that Chris was in here, and he walks with me, and he talks with me. You see, my friend, it's just not cleaning the church. It's just not mowing the grass. It's just, no, but you can have a communication with the King of Kings, and he desires that fellowship. Chris was just in his own world, presence of the Lord. Just cleaning and enjoying and taking his time. I love the sanctuary. Oh, I'll give Barry another thousand dollars for another key for another entrance somewhere else to get to the sanctuary. I love the sanctuary. But more than anything else, I love fellowship with God. And that's what God wanted. He said, hey, I want a, yeah, I want a personal uh, a fellowship with you before I start handing out these Ten Commandments. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Something just, just, just got on my mind. Let me go back a little further here. Let me go back. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ran from his presence, God, the next day, surprised them. And the voice of the God came. And the voice of God came in the cool of the morning and was searching and seeking. Adam, where art thou? Adam, where you at, buddy? I know you have sinned, but I didn't cut your name out. I didn't drop you. I still want to talk. To ya. And the Bible said God went into the garden like he always does. Even when he disobeyed, God still was trying to give a second chance. Still trying to give. I'm telling you what. Jesus Christ wants fellowship with you more than sometimes we realize. That surprised him. I know that Adam thought he was a, he was a loser. I know, and we know the story. He died spiritually and physically. He was spiritually um, digressed and physically they was going to die. But there's God. Adam, where art thou? God never leaves us disappointed. We leave ourselves disappointed. But he never disappoints us. The Bible are full of surprises. 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 Yeah. And I'm going to surprise some of y'all with some gifts here in a minute. And when you get your number called, I want you to just stand up and shout and say, yes, it's mine. Now, brother... Joseph promised that he would get up and shout his to pay off his head. Everybody want to see that? <laughs> uh, just to clarify, y'all, that will be a surprise because he don't have a toupee. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Can we get a drum on the drum on the seat right there, sister, brother Chris? Three, I mean six. Nine, oh, six, nine, oh, six, ladies and gentlemen, nine, oh, six, it's the last three numbers of your card, nine, oh, six, go, come on down here, my sister, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. yeah, look at that, look at that, she's surprised, yeah, okay, here we go, here we go, uh, nine, thirty-two, going once, nine, thirty-two, 
Come on, I know some of you are surprised. Do we have a 932? Do we have a 932 going on? You snooze, you lose. I'm sorry. 932. Oh! 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 Can you do a one jumping jack? Come on, one jumping jack. Yeah! Yeah! I'm telling you, that's what God wants to do. He wants to sneak up behind us. He wants to go before us. He wants to create some, some surprise lilies in our life. Pop! Pop! Here they go. Pop! Yeah, you thought it was just going to be one Bible study, but God's going to give you three Bible studies. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be surprised by this number, and it is 928. Come on, somebody. 928. Everybody's surprised. Look around. Oh, Brittany. Whoa. Everybody go, wow. 928. I'm telling you, God can do exceedingly and abundantly. He will blow your mind. Okay, here we go. Another drum. 920. That's 920. Now, come on, Amber. Woo -hoo -hoo. Can you do a jumping jack? Come on, Layton. Yeah. <laughs> And you can see the surprise on her face. You'll see a surprise on my face. My brothers and sisters, God wants to surprise us. The Bible is full of surprises. Genesis 12, God calls a man named Abram from the city of Ur. He tells him to leave home and go somewhere that God will show him. We are left asking ourselves, who is Abraham? How did he come into this picture? Where is God taking him? Why are not, we are not given God's reasons and the whys and wherefores. We don't know the destination at least yet. But Genesis tells us, now the Lord said to Abraham. We can choose to keep reading about Abraham coming out of the land of Ur, which was a paganistic hell-bent society or we could put down the book here we go sister stephanie we can put down the book in befuddlement befuddlement is it b with the long ear just befuddlement befuddlement now we got another english teacher here too over here julie we got another one somewhere befuddlement can y'all say that with me befuddlement I've never in my life heard that word before. And when I was looking at that, I'm thinking, I saw a picture of Stephanie. <laughs> you preachers know what I'm talking about. But we can choose to keep reading or we can put down the book in befuddlement. God surprises us in whom he calls. Look at, look at some of you. Look at where you've been and look where I've been. Boy, I was a mistake. I thought, ready to happen. Didn't have no fathers to raise me up. A single mom with six children living in the backside of poverty. Oh, look at where some of you come from. Verily, verily survived dysfunctionalism. And here you are today in your right mind. Don't you limit God. God will surprise who, who he calls out of darkness into his marvelous light. I want God to surprise me with some of my, my school friends back in the day. Matter of fact, I ran into a couple of them the other day. And they were surprised. Wow, you go to church? You what? You a preacher? I will not be surprised. I will, but I won't. When God starts calling people that I think would never come. Turn to your neighbor. Please turn to your neighbor and say, never say never. <laughs> Consider another surprise. Elijah was discouraged. I'm telling you, God has some surprises. Matter of fact, before I get into Elijah, 
And before my time runs out, you know I'm being honest. I'm shaking these things up, okay? All right, the last two is 929. 929. Oh! Oh! 929. Now, this just ain't no ordinary church. This ain't no ordinary king. This is Russell Stovall's. Can you do a jumping jack? Woo-hoo-hoo! Oh, she dead those for four. Don't be surprised. Elijah, well, was discouraged and thought he would just be better off dead. You know the story in 1 Kings 19, Brother Brandon. He was running from Jezebel who had promised to kill him. Instead of giving Elijah lodging with a widow for a time of recovery, God sends an angel to give him cake. Can I say angel cake? Gave him cake. This cake was apparently some kind of superfood. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights. Give me some of that. Give me some of that. But I think some of that momentum, Sister Collins, was the fact that he was just so surprised. Wow. Wow, this is better than the widow house. This is better than what the widow. I have angel cake. And that had so much protein, it kept me going 40 days. Everybody say, wow. wow. Not what we was expecting, right? God surprises us in the way he sustains us. I'm still amazed how far I've came, Brother Bill. I mean, when my sisters and mom heard that I got religion, they thought, yeah, he's going through a phase. He's only 16. He'll get back in the senses of things. Wrong. When God surprised me with the power of repentance, I never turned back. And here I am since 1981 to 2020. I'm still surprised about what God does and how he sustains us. God surprises us, especially, of course, in the redemption he secures for us in and through Jesus Christ. Few among the Jews recognized who Jesus was. And even when they did, it wasn't until after the resurrection that they truly understood and appreciated how God had orchestrated history in his people's behalf. It wasn't until after the resurrection that the passage Isaiah 53, who truly appreciates and understands who hath believed our report and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed. What a surprise after he resurrected when Isaiah 9 and 6 bounces out of the pages. For unto us a child is born... Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Who would have thought that God would step out of eternity and step into time and just robe himself in flesh? Who would have thought that he would be a Savior who emptied himself for us? Let me stop here and tell you something also that he surprised. And he surprised this person. He surprised the devil, his imps. He surprised all hell at the cross. He surprised the devil about the death, the burial, the resurrection. Because the Bible says that if the devil would have known, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. See, the devil didn't know that everything that he was doing was directly and indirectly involved in God's surprise. On that resurrection morning, on that resurrection morning, when Jesus went down and took the keys of life and hell in the grave. Oh, devil, in your face. Everybody shout, devil, in your face. Don't be surprised. When God comes and starts ministering 
lilies on your behalf. Lilies on your behalf. Some of you will be, will be caught surprised. Some of you have some impact surprises. And then let me be a little personal here. Some of you have been looking for a surprise from heaven for a long time. And not even your pastor knows what surprises you've been wanting in your life. And I'm going to close here with this. But in the Bible, some barely see this. But when Solomon, Brother Josh K., was building that magnificent temple, there was a lot of going on. You're talking about a church building program. There was a lot of, lot of going on. But there was a couple men that decide to go up to the top of the pillars way up there in front of the temple and they got up there and they started doing lily work on top of the pillars i mean all the all the magnificent architectural genius was it was horizontal everybody could see it the wings and and all of these things and and the cherubs, cherubims and just all of those magnificent things. Why? Why lily work? Can you, can you tell me, Brother Jim? Huh? Why, why, why would they want to do lily work on top of the pillars where nobody could see? Well, somebody did see. And that was for God. Look it up in your Bible. Just Google lily work on the pillars. And what I'm trying to say as Sister Stephanie comes and plays softly is that God's going to surprise you with some things that you've been longing for. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. And every time I go to this feeling, I, I want to quote this scripture. Do not be weary in well-doing. Do not compromise your surprise effect. Do not be discouraged because... God is going to bless you. Even though it's between you and God. You've done that lily work. And you know God is going to do it. He's going to open up the door. He's going to make a way. And some of these things that you're looking for, I probably will never know, but God will. And it's between you and God as we stand right now. Thank you, Jesus. God seems to enjoy working contrary to world's wisdom. God chose the foolishness in the world to shame the wise. He chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God also prefers the people that we often do not. The Lord is near to them that are a broken heart and a, con and a crushed spirit. We often think God will work according to our, uh, to our own logic or our world's logic in our lives, but that's not the truth. That's a wrong viewpoint. God doesn't work according to our logic or the world's logic. He works according to His logic because He says, My ways aren't your ways and my thoughts are your thoughts. So just when we're getting ready to throw in the towel, just when we're getting ready to say, I'm not going to go back to church no more. I've got too many problems. Just when we think that they're not going to live for Jesus, God's already got this. His ways is going to surprise us. I, I put this on Facebook before, but I, I feel like saying it again. Have you ever just <whistles> just smiling and having a good day because you've been going through a bad week, but all of a sudden you're smiling and whistling, and then you said, I knew God got that. I knew it was God that did that. Do I got a witness here? All right, we got another number. 149. 149 going once, going twice. I know we have a 149 in the house today. Do we have it? Do we have it? Oh! Sister Sheila, you've been going through a lot. But 
God bless you with this. Okay, we got another number. We got one last number. Here we go. One, oh, can you do a, a smile and wave, smile and wave? <laughs> nine three zero, nine three zero, nine three zero. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. Oh, sister Angie. You got to share these with Bubba. Can you do a jumping jack? <laughs> Hey, Baba, do a jumping jack. Come on. There we go. There we go. I want to live like that. I want to live like that. And I tell you, these, these, these surprise lilies, that's all I had in my yard. If I had acres of them, you would be getting all of them because I want you to be surprised. I want you to hold on to that expectation. Guess what? Everybody say what? Tomorrow's Monday. Guess what? Somebody say what? You don't know what's going to happen, do you? Let's just raise our hands and thank the Lord. God, continue to bless our hearts. Continue, Lord, to surprise us. Let us open every door. Let us look around every block. Let us, God, move every stone. Let us continue my to expect surprises every area of our life. Oh, that's it, my people. That's it, my brothers and sisters. If you want God to surprise you, just let him know Lord, right now. Oh, Jesus, we come to you, you asking you to let us Lord, not grow I'm weary, but let us stand on the tiptoes of expectation. This is beautiful. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. How you love me. You know what's really surprising is during this pandemic, who would, who would ever know that because of lockdowns, God would use uh, Zoom. Brandon introduced us to Zoom when we was having Zoom fellowship for the people that wanted to log on a few months ago. And then my wife decided to start doing Bible studies on Zoom. She's in her five, six, seventh week. And God surprised us the other day. Did you know this Sunday we're going to have five, eight people getting baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Did you know that God surprised us? God surprised them. God surprised. Why? Because he's full of surprises. He's full of surprises. And what he's done for us, what he's done for others he's going to do for you. I'm going to close with this. Can you imagine what was going on through Christy's uh, mind when finally the parent of all of those kids says, yes, yes, they can go to church. Her eyes went, yes. I want you to believe this. I want you to believe this message. This ain't no sweet sermon for a filler. This ain't no filler. This is what God laid on my heart through those lilies just out of nowhere and I'm thinking Jesus you gave me a message out of that and I'm going to look for surprises every day amen well God bless you shake hands and be friendly and we'll see y'all now Wednesday have a wonderful day today in Jesus name Lord I'm amazed by you Lord I'm amazed Lord, I'm amazed by you, how you love me. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you.
Lord, is it possible to get this far? And just now understand who you are. I'm feeling foolish yet relieved as well. Cause what I bought before I just can't sell. But now my eyes are open wide. If this is wrong, I don't wanna be right. Could it be that on my worst day? How you love me still will not change. What if it's been? 